Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and yeah, all so the road is falling. Uh, talk about your, your life. You, and could you uh, tell me, where were you born? I was born in Quindaro. When? 1941. In 1941. Do you remember the hospital? Uh, I was born at home. At home. So you're just a couple of blocks west of uh -huh. the John Brown statue. That's right. And what do you remember about uh, growing up in Quindaro? I remember my mother and father were all, I was, that's where I got my information from them. <coughs> My dad was a stonemason, and my mother, back in the day, she was a midwife. Because at a certain time in Quindaro, they didn't allow, they, the police were scared to come out there, and so were the doctors at night. So she was the one who had to deliver the babies and take care of the sick. What was his name? Isaac Holmes Sr. Isaac, Isaac Holmes Sr. Isaac Holmes Sr.'s father, they were, uh, well, they were born in uh, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was, uh, he had 16 children. My mother and father had 11. And I was the youngest of the 11. Uh, growing up, he was always on the job. He built, he helped build Wyandotte County Lake. He helped build all the houses up and down. What is that street, Dick and them? 38th, 38th Street, 38th Georgia. Uh huh. <coughs> and he also built uh, the basements and things out there around Quivira Lake. And the church, too. And the church. Um, and your mother? She was a midwife? Uh -huh. her, her parents? Where did they come from? They were from Mississippi. Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And uh, where, do, who, who are your descendants? Are, from uh, the south, are folks from the South? Mm -hmm. And were they slaves? No. Uh, on the home side, they weren't. Uh -huh. on, the, on the Dillon side, they were. And uh, do you know anything about them? I remember my grandmother before she passed. I think she passed when I was eight years old on my mother's side. But my grandparents on my dad's side had passed before I was born. I see. Uh, how did your brothers and sisters uh, treat you? You were the youngest. I was like, they, uh, they child, because they had kids the same age as me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's incredible. So I was basically raised up with my nieces and nephews. Uh, and you have good memories of your childhood? Oh, yeah. Tell us, tell us about it. Oh, every time we would have something, it, uh, every, it would be in the summertime, and everybody was out of school. And all of them would come in, because a lot of them moved away. So my older, one of my older sisters, she moved to Minnesota. My oldest brother moved to Chicago. And the rest of them lived here. And so, they were coming in the summertime, and we just have a big picnic. Did you ever play on the bluffs down the ruins? Oh yeah. Which, uh, which we area? had we uh, we my dad owned land up above the ruins. Ah, uh, do you know approximately where? Uh, right up there by the cemetery. Ah, uh, yes, up on the hill. Up on the hill. So he was he owned property back from that. Uh huh. I see. Uh, and did you ever play in the ruins? Oh, yeah. When we were going to school, we would go go down there all the time. The teachers would carry us down to the ruins. Really? And uh -huh. they gave you tours? Uh-huh. Do what do you remember about the tours? Oh, God. Different places. Uh, they showed us where Jesse James used to stay. It was right up the hill from Quindale Ruins. It was a little shack that he used to go to this lady's house every time he came to Kansas City. 
And he would, every time he hit Kansas City, that's where he would go. And nobody would bother him. What other stories do you remember from your childhood? Oh, God. Dylan. I remember my mother saying when he got shot at Union Station. From? Well, I remember where the house that we lived in, the first ones that lived there was the Wyandotte Indians. Uh, did any of your relatives have any stories of uh, Quindaro? Oh, at yeah. At any time, you know, <clears throat> old time or current? Well, my brother was, my oldest brother was a musician. What was his name? James Holmes. And what what kind of instrument did he play? Piano. Was he pretty good? Oh, yeah. Did he play with a group? Yeah. Uh, do you remember the name of the group? I don't remember the name, but mainly all those that played with him ended up being my brother-in-laws. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you know, speaking of music, what is your favorite kind of music? Uh, rock and roll. Rock and roll. Do you have that's, a that's what I was laid, laid. That's what I was raised up with. Really? Uh huh. And what what uh, what what song comes to mind as your favorite, or one of your most favorite? Trying to think. I know my sister, she played the piano. Well, most of my sisters played piano. She would always play Oh Danny Boy for my mother because my mother was part Irish. Oh my gosh. Danny Boy is a wonderful song. And she'd get on the piano, on the piano and play it and sing it to my mother. Can does, Could she still do that today? She could, she's All of them are gone except two of us. Oh, I'm sorry. It's only two. Uh, Do two. any of your kids uh, play the piano? Uh, no. Uh, George sings. Eugene used to play the trumpet. Kay sings. George, do you know Danny Boy? Oh, he's busy. That's all right. We'll ask him later. That's Sorry. okay. Do you know Danny Boy? Danny Boy. The song? The song Danny Boy. Oh. Our song, that's what uh, Mary used to pay for Mama. It's been years since I did it, but I did it in Well, maybe house. we can test when we're talking with you, and it's because your mother said that was a song that she remembered, that she liked, and uh, you, because your sister had played the piano and sing that. And she was singing that up for my mother all the time. Not May. Danny Boy. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm This would not be something I would hold, you know, it wouldn't be your face, but it would just be your voice. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'd run it behind, whoops. Maybe we'd run it behind this and an introduction. Don't don't be don't be nervous about it. I'm just saying it's an experiment. I'll look, I'll look it up and make sure this can okay. be used Yeah, because uh, up there where Primrose Bill and all of those just are, that belonged to the Methodist Church. It belonged to the Methodist Church? Uh-huh. Belonged to the Methodist Church from there all the way down 27th Street to where Douglas Hospital used to be. That also belonged to the Douglas to the Methodist Church. Uh, were you? Was the Douglas Hospital open at the time you were born? Oh yes, I worked there. What did you do? I worked as a nurse there. Well, tell me about Western. I mean uh, Douglas Hospital. It was the only black hospital we had, and uh, I think it was, it was it was three floors. And I worked from the nursery, and I also worked with geriatrics. Basically, I was all over. Excellent, excellent. Uh, did you, um, can you remember how many patients might be in there at any one given time? Let me see. Probably about 10 or 15 on each floor. Uh, on each floor, so maybe 30, 40, 50 people mm -hmm. at one time. Uh, was it always busy? Oh, yeah. Okay. What did people do before that? Most of them were uh, born at home or were taken care of at home. When I was born, I was a preemie. I only weighed two and a half pounds. Mother wouldn't let me go into a hospital because she thought I wouldn't make it there. So the doctor told her to start feeding me with the eyedropper. And she did. And she did. Do you remember what it was she fed you, or? Uh, 
cow's milk, because we had cows at that time. Well, and she'd take from the young calf's milk, and that's what she would feed me. Could you tell me why she was thinking that you wouldn't make it if you went to the hospital? Because one of my little nieces didn't make it when she went there. I see. I see. Did you, have you ever experienced racism in your life? Oh, heck yes. We were the first, uh, the second group that went into Washington High School. Uh, and what year was that? That was in the 50s. It was in the 50s, and oh God, did we get it. What? We had to watch out for each other because if you didn't, they would try to wait and catch you walking down the hall, pull you in a bathroom, and 10 or 15 of them would try to jump on you and beat you up. Were you ever struck? No, because... <laughs> <clears throat> After I realized what they were doing, we got in, we started going, walking in groups. We found out which one was going to one class or which one was going to another class, and that's how we stayed out of getting whipped. My nephew, they got, I had to get rid of him. They got rid of him because the girls were liking him so well, they planted a knife in his locker, and he never carried a knife. So this was one of your friends? No, my nephew. Your nephew? And he was set up, basically? He was set up. And what happened? And he ended up leaving Washington and going back to Chicago. Are, are you a member of the NAACP? Oh, yes. And in your experience, what would African Americans be without the NAACP? They wouldn't have been able to go into the stores and things like they're able to go into now. Because I remember when we had to march on the stores downtown. Because they would let us go in there and buy stuff, but you weren't able to eat there. You could buy your food, but you had to eat outside. I don't care how cold it was. With snow yeah, we had to march up and down Minnesota Avenue. And I'll be cold, no matter how cold it was. Sunshine or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy, I love you so.